Hello, Agency Go members. So there has really never been a better time for you or your clients to create their own original content. Uh, my name is Adve. I am the creator of Are You Happy, which has over 4 million followers across TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, and Snapchat Spotlight. And the way I was able to grow all those followers was taking advantage of the opportunity that's available to us on these newer short form platforms. And the purpose of this power hour is for me to share with you how we grew to over 4 million followers and the agency that we've built around that presence, around that following. So first I'll get started with a little bit about who I am, uh, and then we'll kind of discuss the space that we're in right now. Uh, so like I said, my name is Adve. I created this show called Are You Happy before I knew what TikTok or Instagram, uh, what, what power those platforms really had. To be honest, I had no idea what TikTok even was. I had heard of a platform called Musical.ly, but really was not a social media person uh, by any stretch of the imagination. But I was really into creating videos, movies, storytelling. So I started this project where I would ask random people uh, if they were happy and why they were happy. And then around the start of COVID, I had all this footage. I heard about TikTok. So I started publishing my content to TikTok. I posted three videos all at once, forgot about it for three hours and then checked back in on those videos and each of them had gotten 300 views. And I was like, I'm going to blow up on TikTok. I'm, I know I'm going to go viral on TikTok because almost a thousand people just saw these videos that I made within three hours. To me, then that was huge. I thought of a thousand people in a room. Um, watching a piece of content and it reminded me of early days youtube or early days instagram facebook snapchat where the platform was new and everybody was see everybody seemed to be blowing up overnight and when i saw those videos each get 300 views each I immediately realized that that opportunity is now present again. Over over time, that opportunity has crystallized more. So I don't want it. I don't want to make it seem like a like a come to Jesus moment. But truthfully, I was a kid in 2007 during the rise of YouTube, uh, dying to be featured on YouTube. I was a little older, but still young when uh, Instagram was going wild in 2016. I saw it happen. I saw people blow up overnight and businesses explode uh, through their Instagram, Snapchat and all that. Um, so when I saw what was happening with TikTok and how quickly I was able to get views, I recognized it for the opportunity. Um, now, what does this mean? What does what do we do with all this information? Yeah, so people blow up overnight on TikTok. Uh, some questions that arise are, What's the purpose of having a lot of followers on TikTok? Uh, is TikTok a great platform for my clients or for me if I'm trying to grow my business? How did we get over 4 million followers? Um, what sort of business have we built around that? How are we converting our TikTok? And I'm going to talk about all of that. And if any of you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the chat. I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions. Um, but let's dive in. So firstly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some articles in the chat um, that you can sort of peruse that shows you the strength of these new short form platforms um, and how they've kind of disrupted the social media market and marketing, honestly, in general. TikTok is uh, TikTok is the preferred search engine for Gen Z. That's a fact, and it is becoming 
the number one search engine across the board. That's huge. Ever heard of Google? TikTok is surpassing Google um, as a preferred search engine. And Instagram Reels um, and YouTube Shorts have a lot to do with that as well. Um, companies like Mr. Beast's uh, Burgers or uh, Logan Paul's Prime or Emma Chamberlain's Coffee, these companies are an indication of what brands and larger businesses will do in the next 12 to 24 months. The power of owning your distribution through your followership and through your social media presence is becoming more and more known throughout the industry. And you will start to see a lot more brands start to create their own original content. Now with Are You Happy, that is our own original content. Um, okay, so, so sorry, let me just back up real quick. Uh, so I sent the articles. Um, I shared a little bit about the success of some larger creators. I want to dive a little deeper into that. But first, let's talk about how did I actually grow 4 million followers? And how can you take what I did and apply it to your business? Um, maybe that's the best place to start. So it was really a five step process. Uh, the number one most important step is step one, which is strategy. Now, I didn't realize it then, but now that we're kind of looking back on the path that we had to over 4 million followers, we realize that having a strategy as the backbone of your entire process is, um, is not just important, it's critical, it's crucial. You can't really create content without it. Now, as an agency owner yourself, or maybe you've created content, this might be uh, common knowledge to you. But you may also have fallen prey to, you know, let me just create content. Let me just go, let me just go create content. Let me just, let me just pull the camera out, let me just shoot, and we'll see what happens. You've been there. Uh, and that, I call that creating content in a vacuum. You have no guiding light. So the strategy, uh, is very, very important. Um, in fact, without it, um, you'd be hard pressed to grow any sort of significant followership. So with, are you happy? Everything started with, with the concept before I ever went out, we worked on the idea. What is the, um, what is the reason people will follow you? So that's the question your strategy needs to answer. And you have, this is very important. You have to take the word follower literally, meaning you have to give people something to follow. A lot of times that's a journey. So you or your client are currently on a journey, whether you or they know it at all. Um, you might be on the journey of growing your business. You might be on the journey of entrepreneurship. You might be on the journey of uh, seeking new knowledge or, or having a child for the first time or building, your, or building a house or building a business or, or your journey is your social media presence in and of itself. There must be a journey that your followers can follow. Now, why is this so important? Why is it so important to have a journey? You might have gone viral a couple times. You, uh, as an agency owner, as a content creator or business owner, you might have had a video that has gone viral. And maybe that video got 100,000 views or a million views, but you noticed that it didn't really convert in a community or even, or even followers, really. So the difference between a viral video that creates a community and a viral video that does nothing is the element of the journey. So that is in step one. Um, you need to, you need your content, you need your strategy to map out point A and point B and your content is the bridge between those two points. Uh, with Are You Happy, we were on a mission to, to give a platform to everybody's stories. That was our mission. So we are, we are traveling around the world and asking random strangers if they're happy. Uh, that's how every, every piece of content started that way, telling the strategy. 
Um, I travel around the world and ask random strangers if they're happy. Today, I'm in Utah and I met this guy. Boom, video starts, they give their answer, video's over. Um, if you're if you're on a journey creating your business, hey, my name is Jake. I am running. I am growing a e-commerce agency business. Uh, I'm on a mission to get to a million dollars a month in revenue. Follow me on my journey uh, today. I am speaking to a potential client about their e-commerce business, and then the, the, and then the video starts. Um, you see how when somebody hears that hook somebody hears that strategy at the beginning of the video, they say, oh, okay, I wanna sign up for this. I want this to be a part of my day. Now your strategy, be, your strategy could be explicit or it could be implicit. So the examples I just gave were certainly explicit where you're actually saying what the strategy is, but otherwise there, there are strategies out there where you just intrinsically understand what the video series is doing. Um, sometimes, uh, you'll see like just an intro graphic, like um, making people's day part 15. Okay, I get, I get what that means. You, you have a video series where you make people's day. How do you do that? I gotta watch the video. Okay, so that's step one, strategy. Step two, high volume content creation. High volume content creation. You might be used to posting two to three times a week for your clients or for your business. You need to get in a place where you're posting two to three times a day. Now, a lot of these TikTok gurus will have you believing that ah, just post whenever you want. Don't listen to these other gurus that uh, tell you to post 10 times a day. Look, the point is you need as many at bats as possible as you can manage plus consistency so if you can be consistent of posting two videos a day every single day then you need 60 videos a month and in order for you to have 60 videos a month you will probably need to shoot so 60 videos a month if each video is a minute that's one hour of footage you'll probably need to shoot two to three hours of footage now, what, uh, you know, you have 24 hours in a day, you're working every day or, or however many days you work. Um, I'm sure there are two to three hours in your day that you can uh, start creating content or two to three hours in your month. Imagine that um, the basically the equation is in order to post two times a day, you need 60 videos a month. Each video is, let's say, one minute. So that's 60 minutes of video. And basically it's like a one, it's like a three to one ratio. So you'll probably be shooting three hours of footage a month. Now, when I put it that way, isn't that a little more um, digestible? For our clients, we basically get, take one or two days and we shoot all day with them, but really you could, you could build your content engine out to be shooting two to three hours just one day every month, and then you're done. You're done for the month. Okay, so what type of content uh, should we be shooting? Um, actually, before I say what type of content, why is it important to do high volume? Why two to three times? Why not once a week? Why not once a day? Um, Because on these platforms, the algorithm is such that you grow at the rate that you post. On average, your videos will essentially have the same amount of viewership. So with Instagram pre-2019, you might have a video that one day did 100 views, the other day did 1,000 views, the next day did 20 views. It was very hard to predict how much of it will be organic, how much of it will be your followers. With TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, Snapchat Spotlight, if you're averaging 1,000 views a video, you will pretty much always average 1,000 views a video. If you're averaging 10,000 views, you'll pretty much always average 10,000 views a video. Now, if you decide to post once a day and you 
have the average of 10,000 views a video, then you will grow at the rate of 10,000 views a day. But if you decide I'm going to post two times a day, well, you've essentially doubled your rate of growth because you're almost always going to hit 10,000 views a video. If you decide to post two times a day, it's 20,000. If you decide to post three times a day, it's 30,000 and so on and so forth. So with Are You Happy, when we, when we were growing Are You Happy, we were at a point where we we're posting multiple times a day consistently. And even though a lot of them were duds, we needed to get those at bats so we could find the diamond in the rough or those viral videos. That's another reason why you also uh, learn at the rate you post. So you grow at the rate you post, but you also learn at the rate you post. If, I po if I'm your competitor, and I post once a day, every day, and you post once a week, every week, then within four days, I will have learned as much as you will learn in one month. In a week, I will already be two months ahead of you. And, and so on. So get those numbers up. Got to get those numbers up, as Matt McConaughey said. Um, Got to get those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers. If you're out there and you're hustling and you're trying to, you're trying to make it, you're trying to make it for your clients, you're trying to get your clients successful. If you're posting less than once a day, every day, you're going to be left in the dust. Now, the third step is what we call viral filters, also known as video editing. Um, we call it viral filters because there's a certain framework that we put our videos through that kind of felt like filters. When we were creating Are You Happy videos, we might have shot one video uh, for, say, 10 minutes of footage, uh, and we whittled that down to one minute. Or we might have shot even a whole day and whittled that down to one 60-second video. Um, so, and when we were doing that, it felt a lot like we were putting the video through filters. And we identified a couple different filters that if you take your raw footage and put it through them, no matter what kind of footage you have, it will do well. So I'm gonna share my screen here and show you exactly what those filters are and what we're looking at when we're in the third step of our, uh, of our process, which is the viral filters or post-production. So firstly, whenever you're editing a video, by the way, feel free to send this to your editors or your client, because uh, a lot of times they, they'll just take my video and just, hey, editor, follow these steps for your next videos. And, and trust me, if they actually follow it, they will go viral. Okay, so every video uh, should have the intention of doing one, two, or all three of these things. If you're in the marketing space, you know all this. So uh, I'll just gloss over that part. But this is where a lot of our my marketing friends and gurus get it wrong. They're still stuck in the world of first three seconds needs to have a hook. Um, wrong. First frame needs to be your hook. Literally frame zero, zero. So to your editor, bring, bring that uh, playback arrow all the way to the beginning of the timeline and place your hook right there. So uh, that hook is defined as anything that uh, makes the viewer pause, think, be surprised, or be intrigued to learn more. So in all our videos we create for Are You Happy or for our clients, we are always, always including a hook right on frame zero. And that's because the user behavior on the short form platforms is such that they're swiping swiping like this at a very rapid uh in a very rapid fashion so that first hook gets them to do that just lift that's that's all we want them to do is just lift the finger off the black mirror now depending how good our hook is we have time to explain so this is when you or your client will talk about their product the value prop the brand goals the brand mission uh any sort of messaging you want to communicate you have one second to 10 seconds so that is determined by how good your hook is um so if they're swiping that you know the, the first hook makes them go like this 
by the time you're done explaining, you know, as, as soon as you start explaining, the finger is going down to swipe away. And I'll watch what happens. That second hook, this is really the, we're giving away the Krabby Patty formula here. The second hook is the part in the video that sounds like, but did you know, or but then, or except. Um, it could also be where, mu where music starts in a really powerful way. So user behavior is swiping very fast, first hook, and then the finger goes down while you explain. And the rate, the speed at which it goes down is depending how good your first hook was. The finger goes down and the second hook makes the hand do this. Drops the hand by the side. And sometimes their head even goes like that. Huh. Then you have another chance to explain. And same, same, go, same thing here. You could go in depth about what your story is. Uh, whatever the video is about, whatever you're selling, whatever the value prop is. Then, this is my favorite part, always leave early. Um, a lot of times, you, when making your video, you feel like you need to include all the information. Keep everything in there. As much as you can pack into 60 seconds, keep it in there. Wrong. Short form platforms work on a loop. So if you think your video has a lot of information, imagine it looped over and over and over and over and over. You're going to exhaust the viewer. You want to do the opposite of fulfilling your viewer. Isn't that weird? You want to do the opposite of, of fulfill, fulfill them. You want to leave them slightly unfulfilled. So the way to do that is end the video early, literally and more sort of intrinsically so intrinsically don't give the farm in every video don't feel like you have to explain everything do the video tell the story and keep the pacing high uh, and then literally we tend to end our videos literally early so we'll add we'll end them typically like we'll in in an effort to leave the viewer feeling like they want more to in order to succeed in leaving the viewer feeling like they want more after the video is over, we will, we will purposefully end the video or cut the video off at the last syllable. And because it loops, because the video loops, the viewer, understands the word that you're cutting off, but also it'll loop again. So they'll, they'll just stay on it. They'll want another dopamine hit. Okay, so that is step three. Step number four, account management. So is it enough to uh, shoot a viral video or have a viral strategy in step one, shoot a viral video in step two, edit a viral video in step three, and then just post the video? Is it enough? Is that enough? to get you over uh, 4 million followers. No. So what we do for our clients and also what we did for Are You Happy in order to get it to over 4 million followers is we do strategic account management. So we'll of course schedule the post. The time is based on the analytics. We will, um, we will review the content market. I'll, I'll talk more about that in just a second. Uh, we'll go live. We'll engage engage in the comments, we'll go live at strategic times, we'll engage in the comments at strategic times. Um, and I, I'm going to dive into each one of those. So the content market, if you're a business oriented person, or a marketing oriented person, and you're trying to crack these short form platforms, look at the feed as a market, or an industry. And so when you're posting, when you're managing these accounts, the algorithm will determine what market it will present to you based on your behavior. So if you're engaging with um, videos of horses, 
it will it will think you are a, f- a fan of equestrian sports or of animals of farm animals of wild animals of nature so it will show you videos and that is your industry that is your market so as a uh, agency owner or somebody who's trying to grow their following or somebody who's trying to grow their clients following train that fyp to reflect the market or the feed that your or your clients target customers are also watching now this is very important so i'm going to say it again your fyp or your for you page your feed is a market and the videos that are served to you through that market are based on your behavior so if you mimic the behavior of your target client or your clients target customers or target users the feed will start to give you videos that it thinks your target customer or your clients target customer wants to view so you want to we call it training the fyp so we train the fyp to serve us videos that our uh our target customers are watching it's like it's it's as if you were to have the opportunity to walk up to your dream client he's got the money he's got the problem you've got the solution you're per your match made in heaven and you pull out his or her phone and you open the fyp and there it is the gold mine that's the sort of content they personally like to watch and you say okay i want to i want to be there i want to be in that feed every day i want them to see my face every day i want them to see my company's content every day in order for you to get the peak at that gold mine you need to train your fyp to give you videos that it's giving that person to so if your target customer is into horses you you better train your fyp to give you horse related content so then we look at the gaps in the content market So just like as an entrepreneur or a marketing person, you are looking for gaps in the market. In business, you wanna look at what problem isn't being solved or what problem is being solved the wrong way. How can I introduce my thoughts, my ideas to fill that gap and build a business around it? Or with marketing, you know, uh, what USP, what what perspective isn't being used? Um, What sort of copy isn't being used? What problem isn't being talked about the the right way? How can we be more unique? These are all looking for gaps. So with building, with managing the accounts, you also want to look for gaps in the content market. Oftentimes you are an expert in the field. Like if you, um, if you're trying to create content about horses, more than likely you like horses, you you're creating content about it. Uh, so you will know after after seeing the feed of horses, you will know what sort of what sort of content is being made and what should be talked about. Um, you know, you know, maybe you you're used to watching TV, and then any time a TV show is talking about an industry you're an expert in, you're like, ah, oh, these people know nothing. It's like a doctor watching General Hospital. They're like, ah, oh, these. This, this is all fake. This is all a TV show. They should have done this. They should have done this. They should have done this. So when you're watching your your FYP, use that knowledge from the account management to also inform step one. That's where we have a lot of interdepartmental conversations at and our at our agency. Um, okay. So other things you can check on is like what hooks are people using that I sh- uh, that. Like what hooks aren't people using that I could be using? And a lot of times you might think that following trends, like going through the FYP and following trends is how you should be conceiving of your strategy or your ideas. It's actually the opposite. You should look at trends and say, that's what I shouldn't do. Because we don't want to be the trend chasers. We want to be the trend setters. And the way to set the trend is by looking at the gaps in the market and filling that gap. Um, Okay, going live. Um, I highly suggest 
going live after posting your video, or if a video is going viral, go live. Why? Because for some reason, the algorithm has pushed your video, the algorithm gods have chosen your video and, um, and, and picked it to go viral. And um, you wanna leverage that success by going live. And then when you go live, you have the full attention of the viewer. They see your video on the feed, they see that you're live, they click on the live, and then you start giving your bottom of funnel messaging. Um, and then strategic times, look at your analytics. It'll tell you what times you should be posting based off of what time your followers are most active. If you don't have enough followers for that data, I recommend 12 p.m. Eastern Standard. They're awake in the UK, they're awake in LA, they're awake in New York and everywhere in between, I guess. Um, and then of course, if you have a different target market, um, post when they're awake. Also, hot tip, VPNs do not work. So if you're targeting a UK audience, um, have somebody post in the UK. Captions. Captions are your way to communicate directly with the algorithm. So when we were building Are You Happy, we would purposefully put, uh, man, I love Atlanta, hashtag Atlanta, hashtag Georgia, hashtag Atlanta is sick, you know, so, and then the algorithm would say, okay, this video takes place in Atlanta. Let me show it to an Atlanta audience. Atlanta people see it. They're commenting, increasing engagement. Okay, step number five, optimization. So this is very, very important. This is what changes your social media growth from a monologue to a dialogue. Um, a lot of people uh, for their clients and for themselves, they'll just post like this, like a one way road. Um, they'll, they'll create content, they'll post, they'll, uh, they'll edit it, they'll post, and they'll just forget about it onto the next, onto the next, onto the next. But you need that feedback loop. You need to take the quantitative data, the views, likes, followers, comments, shares, how many of those there are, and use that to inform the strategy. Uh, you also take the qualitative data. Uh, what are people saying? What are people messaging you about? Who's writing about your video and your strategy? Is BuzzFeed picking it up? And then use that to inform the strategy. Take what's working and go back to the strategy. Identify what it was that worked in that viral video. Do more of it. Uh, take what isn't working. Go back to the strategy and remove it from your strategy. And a lot of times it looks like an hourglass. So if you think of the shape of an hourglass, your strategy starts wide. You're doing a lot of different things, you're experimenting. And then when something goes viral, you have to narrow in on that thing. Now it's not just, it's not a block. It's not, it's not like an eye where you, you start wide, it goes viral and it goes like that. It's a glide and you narrow in. And then as you narrow in, you'll notice you'll get more and more views, more and more followers, more and more likes, but then there will be fatigue. So then you start to expand out. I follow this to like till 100,000 followers, I'll do the hourglass. Once I hit 100,000 followers, it's a lot of hitting the same beat and that's okay. Um, and then I just, I move on the funnel. Uh, I move on types of content along the funnel and I have my base, but as you're getting to 100,000 followers, follow the hourglass model, start wide. When something works, use that quantitative and qualitative data to narrow in on the strategy. And remember the strategy informs the, the high volume content production, the viral filters, the account management, and then you will eventually have fatigue. So you go back to the strategy, widen out and so on and so forth until you hit 100,000 followers. Okay, so that is the exact process that we followed to go viral and get over 4 million followers. It's also the same exact process that we follow for our clients that we've been able to help grow to hundreds of thousands of followers within like three months. Like there is a client that we, we follow the same exact process, 100,000 followers in 90 days. The, these, these numbers are real. It's Docent RX if you wanna check it out. Um, several other clients, we've worked with uh, Burberry, um, a bunch of other startups, personal brands. It's insane and it's so much fun. 
and the opportunity that's in front of us and the opportunity for our clients to succeed is unlike anything we've seen before. I understand YouTube 2007, Instagram 2016, but this is short form. And if you know how to do it right, the, the opportunity is wide open um, and it probably will be for the next six to 12 months, I'd say. And then as ads start coming in, it becomes a lot harder. Um, so I'll also wrap up on this. Um, this knowledge, these five steps we follow to get over 4 million followers is nothing without the knowledge of the algorithm. So that if, if the five steps are here on a line, one, two, three, four, five, the algorithm, the knowledge of the algorithm has to be at the base of that. Um, because all the, you know, what you decide to do for a strategy, how you create content, how you edit videos, they all have to have the knowledge of the algorithm to support it. And I made a video explaining everything about the algorithm. So if you want to see that video, hit me up either on Slack, on the agency go Slack. My name is Adve uh, Trepka, TRE PCA. Just hit me up. I'll send you that video. Uh, and it, it's actually pretty dope. It's pretty cool. Uh, it like talks about the whole back end. There was this leaked article from the TikTok headquarters that the New York Times picked up that we talk about in that article. It's a lot of fun. Just message me on Slack and I will send you that video. And then if you ever just want to talk shop, um, if you ever want me to look at your content or uh, want me to review anything, dude, I am, I'm down for it. I'm so, like, this stuff like fires me up. So please just feel free to reach out on Slack. Uh, message me there. I'm more than happy to review your content, review your strategy, give you some ideas, help you out in any way that I can. Lastly, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll finish off on this. Um, truthfully, the sort of X factor that was behind our content um, was love. Uh, he's being cheesy. He's being uh, corny. No, it's true. It's true. It really is true. I would have never known about these five steps. I would have never, um, I would have never even cared about social media if it didn't, if the path didn't start from a place of love. And what I loved was telling stories and speaking to people. I just love whipping my camera out, walking up to people, capturing real content. It's just, that's what I love. That's what made me happy ever since I was a kid. So when you're creating content for yourself uh, and for your clients, if it's for yourself, uh, please start from a place of love. It'll make it much easier and you'll have much more fun doing it. Um, and then if you're doing it for a client, think about what their target customer, target clients love. Do they love to be educated on equestrian sports? I don't know why we're on horses all of a sudden, but uh, what do they love? What, what do they love? What do you love? And start from there. Um, and then the rest basically falls into place. And these five steps that I just shared uh, will just guide guide that path a little, a little clearer. Uh, if I had known those five steps, I would have I would probably be a couple of years ahead by now, but it's all good. Um, so, so good to meet all of you. Like I said, if you have any questions, hit me up on Slack. My name is Adhe, A-T-D-H-E. Peace.